Hello and welcome to our July Climate Watch update. I'm Philip Duncan. This is brought to you by our business partners at IBM and ruralweather.co.nz. Well, this month coming up is going to be, I think, a little similar to the month we've just had. A good amount of variety in our weather, a mixed bag if you like. So some days warm and sunny, other days more wintry and windy and wet. But that mixture, that variety, is usually pretty good for our economy and for those of you who are growing and farming. So let's take a look and see what is on the way. By the way, this is the July uh, 1st wind map, but it shows the UV levels. And the bright pink areas up here in purple, that is where the extreme UV rays are. So they are now north of the equator, that's the equator right there. So north of there, and what we're seeing in the New Zealand area, green, low levels of UV, but up here in the north, still yellow, that's still moderate, uh, which is a three on the scale. Similar across Australia as well. And the reason why you're seeing that area darker is because there's a lot of cloud through there at the moment. But that's just an interesting map and shows you at this time of the year, even though the days are as short as they get, we've still got a little bit of UV coming through and those levels are still moderate in the yellow zones. But anyway, let's get into what is going on. And we kick off with the state of the climate. And La Nina, well, it faded out a little bit but we're in a watch now. So this is from the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. Uh, we're into that neutral zone, but only just. It is just out of the La Nina area, and they are suggesting it'll stay like that, maybe right through till later in the year, but look at that, when you're in November, right on the edge of La Nina. So it could be declared, the modeling uh, is pretty consistent from all the different international models. I mean, they move around a little bit, but they're all suggesting that we're leaning this way towards La Nina as we carry on. And that means it will stay warmer than average around our part of the world. Wouldn't necessarily lock in lots of rain. The last two La Nina events brought drought to New Zealand. So that doesn't always bring the rain that we expect it to do. Let's take a look now at the sea surface temperatures brought to us by the Moana project. Uh, pretty mild at the top of New Zealand still at the moment to the late teens. You can still go for a swim. It's probably warmer in the sea than it is outside. This is the um, more concerning map. The, where you see the reds on this, that's a sign that things are warmer than they should be. We've been seeing marine heat waves all this year, uh, frequently being uh, announced by the team at Mid Ocean and the Moana Project. So certainly seeing a lot of warmer than average conditions around the country, and that's likely to continue on. Also helps keep our temperatures up, especially in coastal areas overnight at this time of the year. So let's get in now to the uh, forecast for the month ahead as we do going week by week. And the areas in red show the high pressure zones, the areas in blue, the low pressure zones. So as we kick off the first week, a lot of high pressure dominating the map. Now we did talk about that low forming, so there will be a lower blue box forming in that zone there that will be drifting to New Zealand next week. But for now, a lot of high pressure keeping things fairly settled considering the time of year that we're in. Now it's next week, that's where that low from Australia is a lot more prominent. Uh, we are seeing a fair amount of energy and that's because we're still getting that kind of La Nina um, forecast going on, warmer than average up here, and therefore a better chance of producing these rainmakers. So this is not 100% locked in, but we could be seeing some stormy weather in New Zealand next week, in the second week of July. But even if it doesn't occur, and this is around July 7, uh, even if it doesn't occur quite like this, it does indicate that low pressure is coming into northern areas and will likely bring some rain. We'll show you the rain maps in a moment. There are some pretty big totals showing up in some parts of northern New Zealand. And as we go into week three, all of that low pressure stuff moves out to our east. So eastern areas get it as well. So that's what I mean about the variety going all around the country. Another area of high pressure behind that, but also a lot of low pressure in this zone here uh, drifting in. So that's a, it's a more normal weather pattern, if you like, because what we're seeing is a break in these big highs. And when there's a break in between them, that allows a big change in wind directions and uh, often we can get a, a warm subtropical wind and then maybe a wintry southerly, who knows? It depends on exactly how it's set up. But what this shows you is as we go into the uh, third week of July and the second half of July, we're looking at perhaps a bit more of a broken up weather pattern. The high is not quite as powerful at 1019 and more areas of low pressure surrounding us. So that just sort of indicates maybe as we head towards August, just might be a little bit more unsettled. So let's take a look at the soil moisture levels brought to us by the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. You're seeing uh, drier than average in the reds. Now this is an interesting one. My, I, I've got family that live in eastern Waikato. I was only there a couple of weeks ago. There was ponding and flooding on the farms as I was driving around the Waiho River. So I'm not 100% sure about how 
extreme that actually is in the Waikato zone, uh, but I know it is drier than average down here. You'll be getting a few southerlies coming up and that will help a little bit in those areas. But to be honest with you, this is for the next couple of weeks ahead, right through until July 15. So from July 1 to July 15. What it's showing is, very limited rainfall down here in the Southern Ocean, closer to Australia and New Zealand. No rain in this big area through Australia. And you can very clearly see this wet line of weather sliding down towards us. Limited rain up here around Tonga as well, and out towards the Cook Islands. But we're certainly seeing this zone here perhaps shaping up to bring in some bigger rainfall totals, which will be welcome after five years of rainfall deficit. So this is the exact same map, just a bit more close up. Now this is not 100% locked in, of course. It depends on exactly how these lows and fronts move in, and our mountains and ranges then uh, break it up a bit further. But what you're seeing, just generally speaking, is a chunk of rain to the north with about 80 to 150 millimetres brushing through here over the next couple of weeks. And the areas in the darker reds, that's still you know, 60, 80 millimetres of rain. So the North Island, for the most part, except for this area in here around Whanganui and parts of Manawatu, are looking pretty wet. Now the South Island's a little bit caught up in that, getting clipped by these systems, and there's about 60 to 100 millimetres coming through this zone, but almost no rain for Queenstown, and pretty dry around Southland as well, although it looks as though a bit of a wet southerly or southwesterly, sorry, southeasterly, could bring in a bit of rain uh, into coastal parts of Otago, Catlins, and down into Southland, and also maybe about 50 millimetres for Banks Peninsula, which would be very welcome, although that's a very small little blob <laughs> of rain, so I wouldn't 100% lock it in, but it does show you've got a little bit of rain on the way for that dry area at the moment. Now this is the IBM forecast for July, the departure from normal, and to be honest with you, it's looking pretty good for most places. We're right there in the middle, that's the white area, that is the normal rainfall. So if you're just on the other, either side of that, that's still pretty much normal. And to be honest, that's really what we're seeing across New Zealand. The only area that's maybe jumping out drier than average, Southland and Fiordland. I think those areas worth keeping an eye on, but plenty of showers still on the way at the moment. So it's not going to be dry. And you can see that rain over in Australia really showing up uh, drier to the north, but around Sydney, you're leaning wetter than average. That was July. This is July, August, September, and you can see it's fairly normal rainfall. We're sort of leaning maybe only you know, 12 millimetres wetter than usual, which is not a lot. So it's about average, really, for New Zealand. That's a good variety of weather coming through. But those high pressure zones do look as though they might just keep some southern areas, especially the Fiordland area and through the Lakes District, a wee bit drier than they should be. And it's a different story over in Australia, looking wetter than average for most of you, except for Tasmania. And as we take a look at temperatures for the next three months ahead, and by the way, July looks just the same, New Zealand continues to lean warmer than average by about half a degree, getting up closer to about maybe 0.7 degrees above average, which is, just for reference, what we've been seeing every month so far this year. Even with the cold injections and frost here and there, it is still leaning warmer than average, and we're seeing a lot of mild nights because it's been a bit windier and cloudier here and there and not quite as frosty. So that is the forecast for July and the climate outlook for the next few months ahead. Variety is in there and that is a good thing. That is all from me. Please do keep up to date with your hyperlocal forecasts. You can get those at ruralweather.co.nz. We'll see you in a month.